welcome back. We're going to be going over VHS box sets this time. Uh, this is a really cool one. I remember checking out a lot as a kid because I enjoyed Disney's Gargoyles the series. This is Gargoyles the movie, The Heroes Awaken, and it was a really nice release because it has a free interactive VCR board game. So those were an oddity that weren't around for very long, the uh, games using your VCR. But this is a fairly unique release then. Terminator Collection, Terminator 1 and 2. So far the only two Terminator movies I genuinely enjoy. We'll see about the one that's coming out here pretty soon that's going to kind of erase Terminator 3 and all the rest and just be, you know, the sequel to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So maybe that'll form a really good trilogy. I might have high hopes for it, but we'll see. Moving on to Cold Steel for Tortuga. And this is just a cool box set. Like, look at this thing. Huge box set. A big chunk of South Park. These were fantastic because they were brand new sealed. Still had all the like uh, youth restricted uh, warning labels and they were the old $35 blockbuster price tags. And it just had everything on it to make it just such a perfect nostalgia piece for that time period and brand new sealed. Uh, yeah, these are just fantastic tapes, volumes uh, 9 and 10 of South Park and they were exciting for me because this is still the time period when South Park was first coming on, those first couple seasons where I was forbidden from watching South Park, absolutely forbidden. So I watched every single episode as it aired at my friend Zach's house. But it just reminded me of, of stuff like that back in the day and having all the old you know, warning signs and the, the blockbuster labels and like those are just really cool additions to have there. One of my favorite box sets, Rocky 1 to 5. Absolutely love the Rocky movies. Fantastic. Faulty Towers, which the box set was always weird because it felt like they were trying to make it look like Monty Python thing and it's not. <laughs> but yeah, Faulty Towers box set. I uh, enjoyed going through all of that and revisiting that series. It's just, it's so much fun. And it's such a great way that it came about where it doesn't overstay its welcome. I think this happens more with American TV series than any other, where sometimes a story really just needs a certain number of episodes to get across, or there's only a certain number of really quality ideas that when it's distilled down to its essence, it only needs like, you know, 12 to maybe 40 episodes max. And that's where it's really good. But if the ratings are really good, for a US TV series, usually it'll just kind of drag on. That happens a lot. Um, even one that's really popular, you know, uh, Supernatural. Supernatural's still fun beyond the original planned five seasons, but if you cut out the last, you know, few seconds of the last episode of season five, that's a great five season series. Love it. Then it's just kind of like really good fan fiction from then on with some individual episodes that are fantastic. But yeah, there's so many different series that either are cut off too soon because some some influences from the networks or they just drag on past the time if they're actually any good. The Christmas Classics box set, love these. I mean, yeah, just for decades everyone grew up with these being on TV endlessly around the holiday season, uh, which now starts in August. But yeah, just those are great movies. The only one that's missing here is the Little, uh, the little Drummer Boy, but to me that's, I don't know, for some reason I didn't I never liked that one quite as much as uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, Frosty a Snowman, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Um, yeah, there's just so many so many good box sets of those Christmas classics, but yeah, that was fun to have on VHS. Gotta have that on just about every format. That's something that the kids are going to grow up watching, I'm, I'm sure. The Carol Burnett Show, uh, this is another one of those. This is the re-TV, another one of those lines of classic television shows on collectible VHS. And I got some of these because I really enjoy the Carol Burnett show. I just have one little selection of like Carol's favorites on DVD. Uh, not one where I want to spend the money for like a full box set. I won't rewatch every episode. But these had some really good guests that I really liked. Uh, Lily Tomlin and Steve Lawrence. Alan Alda. That's the main reason why I picked this one up. Uh, when I found these, there was a set of uh, probably 20 or so of these. But I picked out some, some guests. But Alan Alda being as MASH is one of my two favorite shows of all time. Uh, Gloria Swanson in that one, Shirley MacLaine and Sammy Davis Jr. And this one had Bernadette Peters, so gotta grab that, Bernadette Peters. Moving on to two 
mega box sets, one that I got from my brother not that long ago, Gone with the Wind. This huge VHS box set. So I had, I had the big Laserdisc box set, and now I had the big VHS box set. So with the both tapes and then the little fold out here. Obviously not as cool as the Laserdisc box set. It doesn't come with quite as much, uh, but still a cool piece for, for the shelf. And one that is equally awesome, even though the movie is definitely not as good. Uh, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. And I showed this one off in another video before when we grabbed this, but yeah, there's just so much in here. Nice booklet. Lithograph, which has Jar Jar, which is eh, whatever. But and then the tape. So, nice box set and a couple more over here I gotta go grab. Enter the Dragon, so if you get a special release of that, definitely worth grabbing. And a set of M.A.S.H., the Columbia House Collector's Edition, just like those uh, Star Trek ones I saw. I got a, just a stack of M.A.S.H. VHS Collector's Edition tapes. And these ones are interesting because in this lineup, it's been released you know, a couple different times, but in this lineup it wasn't in order of air date or anything like that, it was more grouped by subject matter uh, fairly loosely in some respects but it was still pretty cool to get to get it that way and then you got a good mix of episodes across the, all the different seasons I think the I'm trying to look at the ones here but I don't think I have any that are from seasons like the very last two I think it's a little more early to middle uh, but still getting a bunch over different ones a welcome to mash uh, grace under pressure Charles in charge dear dad operation overload and staff infections so I really wanted to have a handful of these, just different ones that I picked up over the years for M.A.S.H. being that it's one of my two favorite shows, gotta have a little bit of that on VHS. And then I have the, let me put them in order here, a little mixed up. The BBC Chronicles of Narnia, the whole release lineup here. These are the single tape releases here of Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Prince Caspian and the Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Uh, I put the two books into one for there and the Silver Chair. I loved these growing up. Um, I remember watching them on PBS and just falling absolutely in love with them. They happened to air on PBS when I was watching them right around the same time I was reading them as a kid. So it was just perfect timing and they really crossed the generations. I mean, I, some people like say, oh, it's a late 80s into early 90s made for TV movie. Uh, the effects are goofy and dated and Sure, but there's a magical charm to it, to even where I showed these to uh, my younger cousin, who is just who just turned eight over the summer, so he was seven when he started seeing them, and he, we were reading the books together. He saw some of the newer ones that Disney did, and then he saw these, and he's like, I like these so much better. <laughs> they really, they are, like, even though that, yeah, they are not the biggest budget, you know, BBC, made for TV movies, not theatrical things, they're so well done, and there's something about them that is just absolutely just magical and charming, despite, obviously, the age and the effects and things and whatever. But I just think they're fantastic, and they're still great to rewatch. I absolutely love these. I wish they had done more. I mean, there are definitely uh, difficulties as you get into some of the later books. But, uh, yeah, I really wish they had tried to... Uh, expand upon them and do more, maybe even change up the, not be, not be as true to some later books to make it work, who knows what they could have done, but uh, yeah, just having those four books in those three uh, movie, miniseries really, they're much longer, but those just fantastic. Very happy to have those. And that's it for the big box set stuff. Next we'll move on to science fiction. And then the last video, I'm looking at the pile over here, is by far going to be the longest.